happy happy friday happy friday good morning wonderful to be with you today i have a treat and i am i believe it's a treat uh i'm gonna talk about five lessons five life lessons from geese no less geese that will help you in your life or your love life or your leadership promise not messing promise <laughs> so we are uh on facebook tonight. we're on instagram this morning we're on youtube this morning we're on linkedin this morning and we are on broken chains page live love leads page and my personal page so we're all over the camp as uh, people would say but i'm so glad you are here and i hope you have your tea or your coffee or your water or whatever you're drinking this hour of the day because we're going to jump in and talk about five life lessons from geese if you don't mind five life lessons from geese and i'm just noticing right now that my comment section is good morning hiding on me here we go i think they're here yes good morning janine good morning mary <laughs> so good to be with you happy friday if you have not already registered for our what would it be like to be a, a life coach formally informally in business or ministry then please 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 register you have to make sure that you get the capitals in there uh, correctly because i had a, a, a somebody write to me from instagram saying hey this is taking me somewhere else i promise you i'm not trying to send you anywhere else other than to register for the uh uh for the meeting that we have today for the master class right and I, I promise you we'll have a ball in there and so would love to um just re remind you one more time well done janine thrilled for you thanks so much so for those of you who might not have not registered clc so it's bit.ly forward slash capital clct raining like it does in ireland all the time except for when visitors go and then they make me out to be a liar and the weather's gorgeous bit.ly forward slash capital C L C T R A I N I N G. and without further ado raining is lowercase the rest are uppercase let's uh, let's talk about geese how about that how about them eggs and First lesson, ready for the first lesson? First lesson is that when each goose flaps its wings, it creates an uplift. When each goose flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the birds that are behind them. And so when they fly in V formation, the whole flock adds 71% extra to their flying range. You tell me, what's the takeaway from that? What do you think the takeaway from that might be? When each geese, goose flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the birds that follow. And by flying in a V formation, the whole flock adds, I'm not, 71% extra to the distance that they're able to go. 71%, I find that amazing. And so lesson number one is that 
we're in it together. And when, oh, you know what? I'm not sharing this with you, am I? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to get to it now. Here we go. Let me share this. Boom. All right. We're in it together. Five life lessons from geese. And if you're on Instagram, forgive me. On Facebook, you can see this and uh, YouTube and some of the others. So, so, but, but don't, don't believe in that Insta if you're there. <laughs> okay. So, so, and if I show it to you, it's backwards. All right. So believe me, promise you. And be, by the way, the man who used to say, I write like cat scratch. <laughs> so we're in it together. Uh, the, the first lesson from geese is that when each geese flaps its wings, it creates an uplift and the birds that follow behind them <clears throat> in V formation have a 71% extra flying range. When you do life together, right, you are able to go farther. No, no, nothing extra. That's what I'm saying, right? When you fly left. So when you see them up there and you see them in the V's or you see them in the W's or whatever they're in, mostly in the V's, that's what's going on. That's lesson number one, all right? Uh, and, and so for me, I, I don't want to do it alone. I don't want to fly alone. Uh, yeah, uh, and there's so many more, so many more. Okay, it's a good one. All right, all right, all right. okay. Uh, and, and look, when, when, when we have a sense of community and focus, we create trust and and we help each other to achieve what, whatever we're, we're shooting for, whatever we're flying for, whatever we're, right? When we have a sense of, of being in it together, of community, right, and focus, right, and generally kind of heading in the same direction, there is a sense of trust that gets built. There's a sense of helping each other that gets built. And, and everybody goes further, faster, and, and ultimately 71% for geese. That's just wild. And the same is true in a life lesson or a love lesson or a leadership lesson for you. And for me, okay, number two, you ready? Number two, I'm going to tell you the description and then um, I'm going to kind of, well, I'm going to ask you and invite you to tell me your takeaway. Uh, and then I'll, I'll give you mine. When, when a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and the resistance of flying alone. And it quickly moves back to take advantage of the lifting power of the birds that are in front. When a goose falls out of formation, suddenly it feels the drag and the resistance of flying alone, and it quickly, if it comes to its senses pretty quickly, goes back <clears throat> and experiences the lifting power and the drag. I mean, not the drag, but the, the kind of that inertia from the rest of the geese. What do you think your takeaway from that one is? I think if we had as much sense as geese have, we'd stay in formation. With those who are heading in the direction that we want to go. We would be willing to accept their help and give help, our help to others more often. If we had as much sense as geese. When a goose falls out of formation and suddenly feels a drag, the resistance of flying alone gets back in there. Any thoughts come to you? Any thoughts surface for you? We're talking about five life lessons from geese. Second takeaway is the importance of team work. The importance of teamwork. <laughs> love that. I love how God created <laughs> all of us with some message about how we do life. 
When we're in it together, we go further. 71% if you take the lesson from the geese. When we, when we stay in it together, we don't feel the isolation, the aloneness. I mean, I'm thinking of a fire and a coal, a hot coal in a fire. When it's in the fire, it's red hot, you know, grew up with open fires, uh, visions of family members warming themselves, you know, in front of the fire and all of a sudden you'd smell kind of burning. Um, <laughs> it's surfacing. Uh, nobody, nobody really too badly anyway caught on fire, you know. No one was injured in this, <laughs> in this story. However, when, when a piece of coal would fall out, I mean, it wouldn't take long before it to stop being red hot and cool down. And so, um, so that's, that's another picture that I get when, I, when I'm thinking of the, of the geese. All right. Um, number three, numero three. When a, when a goose gets tired of flying up front, it drops back into formation and another goose flies in the point position. When a goose gets tired of flying up front, it drops back in position and another goose flies in that point roll. And a takeaway for me, I'd love to hear any takeaways that you may have. And if I'm not responding to you, God love you. It's just it's because your, your comment isn't coming through on my end because uh, we're kind of streaming to a lot of different places this morning. So it pays to turn or take turns doing the hard tasks. It pays to take turns doing the hard tasks. And just because you may be the leader doesn't mean that you have to be leading absolutely everything is my couple of takeaways. Again, if you've got one, I want to hear it. What's landing on your runway while we're talking about the geese flying in the air and taking off and going 71% farther when they're in it together in V formation and staying in it together is maybe challenging but it is so less challenging than when you are on your lonesome. And number three, just the importance of sharing. The importance of sharing the load. And some of us are better at that than others. Some of us have a difficult time with sharing the load, you know? And hey, it's often because of, you know, what's happened, right? It's often because of what's happened down the road, on the way, yeah? Um, you know, maybe others let us down. <clears throat> maybe others said they wouldn't, they didn't. Maybe, you know, and so we've kind of, we've gotten ingrained, we've gotten to, to believe that I, I have to do it. If it has to be, it's up to me. And... <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, man. Absolutely a vital part of being a leader, Pete says, is is to know when, to, you know, when to let somebody else take the lead. Yeah. Yeah. And and it takes a secure leader to do that. And I, I don't even mean huge security. I just mean for the betterment of the team, sometimes you, you shouldn't be the one taking the lead. And for your betterment and for the betterment of the team, for the growth of the team, for the maturity of the team. Yeah. All right, you ready for another one? Are you ready for another? Well, I lost my place, so let me get back to my notes. Here we go. All right. So, um... Oh, this is a good one. All right, number four. Mm. Before I give it to you, let me tell you about it, okay? When a goose gets sick. <laughs> this is cool. When a goose gets sick, two other geese 
when I was growing up, we'd say, this geezer, you know, two geezers came out of nowhere. <laughs> but two geese, we're not talking about geezers, we're talking about geese, right? When one gets sick, two geese drop out of formation and follow the other goose down to the ground to help it and to protect it. What's your takeaway? We're talking about five life lessons, love lessons, and leadership lessons from geese on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Five lessons. The first one was you can go 71% further when you're flying with others. <laughs> the second life lesson is how important it is to stay in it, to win it. Because when you drop out of formation, when geese just drop out of formation, immediately they feel the drag and the resistance. And when they come to their senses, they get back in line. And if we had as much sense as geese, we would find a, find a flock to be a part of, right? So we could be in it together and go further faster and last longer. When number three, a goose tries, uh, gets tired flying up front, it drops back in formation and another goose takes the, uh, takes the point position. It pays to share the burden, right? The, the life's manual says, bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the plan of your savior, right? How are you bearing one, one another's burdens? Dude, I can barely bear me own. Thanks for saying that, because that takes us to number four, which is the importance of empathy. And understanding. I know, I gave you that one before I told you the story. The geese are killing it, aren't they, Pete? I think so too, yes. Rebecca, beautiful. I, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Like, who would have ever thunk it? A leprechaun would be teaching us lessons about geese that I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure. I want to say they, they do have geese in Ireland, but I don't know that I saw a whole lot of them growing up, to be honest with you. All right, are you ready for number five? Oh, wait a second. I, I, I got to explain number four. And I already kind of introduced when a geese when a goose gets sick, two other geese drop out of formation, follow it down to the ground, and help it and protect it. Empathy, putting yourself in another person's shoes to try to see life like they see life. You don't see it that way, but empathy, empathy helps you do that and helps you change in your response to them. I think it's one of the best values on our planet when we're willing to work at empathy. Kev, so we're like, you have to work at empathy. Like, is it real? Sure, it's real. Sure, it's real. Especially if you're intentional about doing it, it's real. <clears throat> and understanding. And just being there when you got somebody wounded. So many people think, well, I just I wouldn't know what to say. It's not about what you have to say. <laughs> I can't talk like you. I can't talk like you. It's not about what you say. 93% of your communication is about everything else except the words. Melissa, I love this thought. I think this is why BCI, so that's Broken Change International, if, if you don't know who that is, they're a phenomenal group of counselors and coaches. We're in it together, care for each other very well. I think we are a very healthy place for others to get healthy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's almost like uh, there are geese ready <laughs> and waiting. Uh, for, for wounded birds to come in and find a place to rest and be, and be protected and get power back and perspective back. <laughs>
and in some respects protection back yeah love it love it love it love it all right number five numero five for you early birds yeah you know i i i'm so i'm so grateful you're sharing this um I'm so grateful you're sharing this. Um, I'm talking to Rebecca because I'm, I'm because this is really common, right? So, so um, a lot of people have a difficult time to ask for help. Um, to acknowledge, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting. I'm, I got to lag back. I got, and so we push on. We push through, right? And and sometimes pride is the reason. Sometimes we don't know how to ask. <laughs> uh, we we haven't been taught the words, or haven't been open to learn the words, or sometimes it's hard to ask for help because we're driven by belief, right? Belief drives behavior. So 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 the belief is it's not okay to be weak. Some of us carry that. It's not okay to be weak. It's not okay to be weak. And if you believe it's not okay to be weak, then you will have a, a difficult time acknowledging your weakness. Some, some just don't want to be a burden, right? Some are like, if you complain, you are a burden. We carry that in our filter of beliefs sometimes. And so that makes it difficult for us, right? There's all sorts of beliefs. So let's learn from the geese. <laughs> and let's, hey, man, let's be the one that drops out and, and goes and checks and protects and provides and nourishes to the degree that you can, right? You can't do it all, right? And you're not supposed to do it all. And if you're wounded, some of the greatest, hardest steps for us to take are when we give ourselves the permission to drop back. These are great, these are great questions. All right, what do you do when you ask and nobody responds? Great question. Because that happens too, right? Uh, it's not about the asking. I have no problem asking, some of us would say, right? <laughs> but, I, but, but I've asked and I've asked and I've asked and nobody's... Okay, number one, I will say to you, anytime you experience ugly in your life, it's not its not about you. It's about what's going on inside the other person. And I would count it ugly for people not to step up and respond in help or support uh, when asked, if they have the means to do it, okay? And I, I think just a response is good. And sometimes, again, people don't know what to say in response when they can't help. And so they just say nothing and they ignore or hide. But what do you do when you ask for help and nobody responds, a uh, couple of things. Number one, know that it's not you. Number two, um, know uh, that you might need to find a, a, a more community, a different community. I'm not telling you to reject the ones you're with, but I am telling you that you might need to find some more people. That frankly, the silence might be the, um, or consistent silence or consistent lack of stepping forward might be the, the, the sticks in the nest to help you be uncomfortable enough to, to, to find another nest in the sense of community, in the sense of uh, su support group. It's, it's, that's another really common one. It's, it's sometimes it's not just, I don't ask, I don't, but sometimes it's, no, I'm asking and I'm not receiving help. They are speaking to you and Jesus would ask you this. He'd say, what do you want? What, what do you want? Because if, if, if you want support, if you want uh, re responsiveness, then, then, you, then you need to position yourself in a place where there are a people or people group who will provide that for you? Mm. I mean, it's so good. 
so good and it's tough right it's where the rubber meets the road and i would say this too sometimes <clears throat> it takes a little bit of time you know i'd say sometimes it's a little bit of time uh to to build trust to build connection sometimes sometimes you know what what do the proverbs say for a man or a woman to, to have friends, they must show themselves friendly. Ah, Kev, look, come on. It's not about me not being friendly. Awesome. Awesome. Then check that box. Move on. But sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. I, I am personally flabbergasted, flabbergasted at myself. Why? Continue to be flabbergasted at how I come across to other people at times. Not in the way that I intend. So here's a question. What's it like to live on the other side of me? To the people in your life. What's it like to live on the other side of me? See what they say. Say, I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to beat you up verbally if you tell me something I don't want to hear or it's difficult to hear. I, what's it like to live on the other side of me? See what they say. Or uh, on a scale of one to ten, what's your experience like in relating to me? Where, 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 where is that? Uh, and, and whatever number they give you, ask them, what would it take to bump up to, an, an, you know, what could I do to bump up even just one level? All right, you've been so patient. I'm going to give you number five. Uh, is that helpful? Does that make sense? I mean, it's not easy, is it? It's not easy. It's not easy to ask for help and not receive it. Sometimes the prayer that we're praying isn't being answered because the answer is part of the silence or the lack of movement that needs to shift something in us to uh, to take a different action. Doing the same thing over and over again, even if it's an appropriate or right thing, but expecting a different result may, 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 may be that we need to stay at it and we need to ask a different question. Like, why is it that every time I ask help of you, no one responds. You don't respond. Really? Like individually ask that question? Why not? It's not like it's not like you're gonna lose anything. We're not getting anything. Different question. I read recently that brilliant answers are never heard for the want of a good question. You ready for number five? This might be my favorite one. Janine, you're so welcome. And sis, uh, I'm believing that was for all of us. So love it. Thank you for that. Geese, when they're flying in formation, honk. Honk? No, honk. As in, That sounded like a donkey, didn't it? I'm so sorry. It's too early in the morning for that. Uh, they, <laughs> they honk to encourage those up front to keep up with their speed, to keep up with the pace. Geese flying in formation, when you hear them, <laughs> they're encouraging the one up front to keep the pace up. You're doing great, Kev. Keep going, man. Keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. I promise. Yes. They're singing together. Becca. Yes. There's power in praise. But in addition to that or with that, number five is the importance of encouragement. The importance of encouragement. 
We need to be honking at each other <laughs> when we're not in our cars. In groups and teams where there's encouragement, the, the, the result level of the team is always greater than when there's not. The individual feels encouraged, feels empowered, feels motivated, feels moved to keep going unless they can't and they stop and then encouragement takes on a different form, right? I want to ask you, what's the quality of the honking like in your life? First of all, you're honking to others and second of all, they're honking to you. It's so important to be an encourager. I love Barnabas. I love Barnabas because his name means encourager. And he found grace where he went. He didn't find grime. And you will find what you're looking for. I think it was Henry Ford said, whether you think you can, whether you think you can, or whether you think you can't, you're usually right. Whether you think you can, or whether you think you can't, you're usually right. I don't know what that was connected to, to be honest. But other than, other than, <laughs> other than, <laughs> your belief determines your behavior and oftentimes it determines your outcome. So, I'm going to run through them real quick. I want to ask you, tell me your nugget. Tell me your favorite. Tell me your favorite. Maybe you just give me the number. I'll give you, I'll give you the quick run through. All right, here we go. Five lessons from geese for your life, your love, or your leadership. Number one, the importance of achieving your goals happens when you do it with others. As each geese flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the bird that is behind them. And when they fly in a V formation, they add 70, 71% extra to the flying range of the group. Amazing. When we have a sense of togetherness, community, focus, we create trust and we help each other get to where we want to go. Number two, the importance of teamwork. When a goose falls out of formation it suddenly feels drag and resistance of flying alone and it quickly gets back into that formation and experiences the lift of the others that they're in it with number three The importance of sharing each other's burdens. When a goose gets tired of flying up front, it drops back in formation to let another goose fly in that point position. It pays to take turns in the hard tasks. It pays to share one another's burdens. That's the way it's supposed to be. And so we need to respect and protect and honor each other's skills and capabilities and talents and resources and find ways to help celebrate them. Be champions of the people that you are flying with. And if you're not flying with anyone, come fly with us. I feel like Top Gun right now. Come fly with us. Number four, the importance of empathy and understanding. When a goose gets sick, two geese drop out of formation and follow it down until they are safe and protected and actually sometimes stay and protect and help restore it if possible.
We need to stay by each other in difficult times. Not just when we're strong, but when we're weak. And with that, number five, the importance of encouragement. Geese flying in formation. Hunk. At each other. To those up front, especially, to keep up the pace, keep up the speed. I've run in marathons where there's a pace runner that's holding the kind of goal and finish time. And there's so much encouragement in that group. And when you fall out of it, sometimes people hang back and kind of say, come on, come on, let's go. We can do this. Push through. Let's go. We need to make sure that our hunking is encouraging. In groups, in teams, in families, in coupleships, marriages, where there's encouragement, the experience of that team is, is infinitely better. And the quality is infinitely better. So let's be intentional about being encouragers just like Barnabas was in the Bible. Questions? Thoughts? There, there, I'm going to talk to you sometime. I'm going to share a cool thought about the power of praise. And so, yes, honking together, singing together, encouraging one another. Love that. Huge, huge power in that. Question. So it's okay to drop back and rest a while while still moving forward with those who encourage the community. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Melissa says they're all so important every one of the five are so important I want to be a goose <laughs> I'm thinking of that movie I don't like pa no uh, I don't want to be a pa I don't like gravy name that movie <laughs> I don't want to be a pa I don't like gravy it's an animated movie a few years ago um, yeah I want, to, I want to live like a goose. Instead of living like you are dying, like the song says, live like you are flying. How about that? How about, we, how about we embrace that? Live like you are flying. Just like the geese. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And I think our challenge, really, our only challenge is, so what are you going to do about it? That sounds like a fight. No, no. What, what are you going to do with it? Huh? Here's what I want to ask you. I want to ask you to just let me know which one are you going to be intentional about today in your life with the characters in your story today. Which one of the five are you going to be intentional about? Just type it in, please. Which one are you going to be intentional about? Let me know. Maybe give me a number. In it together? Team? Sharing a burden? Empathy and understanding? Wow. Encouragement. Which one is kind of most, like they're all good, but which one are you mostly sensing for you today? Yeah. Great. Pop a number in. Great. Jacob says one. Janine says four. Becca says five. Encouragement. Pete says one. Just got, I gotta, I gotta get in with a gang. Gotta get in with a flock. I love it. I'm five. Ah. So, so, uh, I, I, so the challenge is. Which which is your one, right? It's we all I think have need of maybe uh, tweaking all of them or some of them way more than others. But when you've got two that are right there, focus is powerful. And so which one between one and five is you know and you, they they can all be we can we be working on them all together. I, I'm going to say you have to have one before you can practice five. Oh, there's your answer. 
as plain as the nose on the end of your Irish brother's face. Uh, you, you, we, we've got to have some birds to be able to encourage. Love it. Hey, can I um, can, can I just pray this over you? Can I just pray it for you? And then I'll, I'll let you go. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> Jesus, thanks so much for uh, for the folks that's, that made it here to this live today. And God, we, we need we need we need to do this with others. We we need uh, to understand maybe more than we do or have the importance of teamwork and sharing each other's burdens and getting our eyes off of ourselves and 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 doing for others as we would have them do to us and sharing that load and just providing empathy and compassion, understanding and just helping us grow, Lord, in that and just being encouragers. God, whatever the number for, for whoever's right now, for whoever's watching that just made the most sense, God, would you just give us the gumption, the motivation, the wherewithal to take action and to move in that direction? And we'll trust you with the results, with the outcome. I pray encouragement for each one that's found themselves here, that's been intentional even about being here uh, for this daily dose today. I pray it might give them an uplift and that they may be able to fly easier and further and not feel alone and be encouraged and in turn share that love, empathy, and as best as they can, understanding with the birds that are around them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, have a fantastic Friday. Join me at 12 today or at 9 a.m. tomorrow for, um, for a life coaching uh, opportunity for you. There are bonuses for people who show up live. Um, could this be something that you would do, could do, would want to do, add on to what you are already doing, but also like help you and yours, and then in turn be a support to others in your life through this practice we call life coaching. Have a great rest of your day. Sprinkle this amongst the birds in your circle of influence. And I look forward to seeing you at 12 or at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we will go from there. May you feel his favor, the favor of your father today. May you see the fingerprints of your father today. May you know his peace. Just through these few minutes, may you not feel alone, and may you be motivated to be an encourager of those in your story. Take care, God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next time.